Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. What we're going to do here is work through some examples, drawing some easy Lewis structures. This is part two in my series on Lewis structures, and part one we go over what Lewis structures are and all the rules. So check that out first if you haven't. Okay, so let's just get right to actually drawing some Lewis structures. This first molecule we're asked to draw is CH3Cl, and I've written down a number of steps below that you should always follow in order to get the right Lewis structure. So very important that you follow these in order. At some point, you might become such an expert at drawing Lewis structures that you can look at that structure and picture in your mind what the molecule looks like. That doesn't happen for a while. So you always have to follow these steps very carefully in order to get the right structure. And the very first thing we do is we count our valence electrons. It's super important that we start here. The valence electrons, remember, are our outermost electrons. And if you're not familiar with how we count those, check out my video on valence electrons first. The way we count valence electrons is we identify the element on the periodic table. So let's start with carbon. So with carbon, I have carbon right here, and I count the boxes from left to right. And I have one, two, three, four boxes. So that gives me four electrons from carbon. I also have to take into account how many electrons, or how many carbons there are. And there's an implied one by that carbon, right? So there's just one carbon. That means carbon total contributes four electrons. So what we're doing in the second column here is multiplying by the number of carbons, or the number of each atom. Wow, that's not how you spell atoms. There we go. Okay, the reason we're counting valence electrons is because that's the only thing we show when we do Lewis structures, only the valence electrons. So this is counting up how many we have to distribute. All right, let's go on to hydrogen. So hydrogen has just one valence electron because it's the leftmost box. So we have one valence electron per hydrogen, and now we have three hydrogens, so that gives us three electrons. Lastly, let's do chlorine. Chlorine's right here, and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven boxes over. So seven, and then we multiply it by how many we have, which is one, and that's seven electrons. Now we add them all up. So what we did there is we figured out how many valence electrons does each atom bring to the table when we're going to form a molecule. And we did that by figuring out how many valence electrons each atom has and taking into account how many atoms we have. Then we add them up. That gives us 14 electrons. This number should always be even. There are a few cases where it won't be even. Those are very weird exceptions. So if you get an odd number there, that means double check your count. Okay, one thing that can happen is if it's a charged ion, that can be what you're missing. And that doesn't come into play till later, but just keep that in mind for later. So, that should always be an even number. Because our electrons come in either lone pairs or in bonding pairs. So they're all paired, and that means we need to have an even number of electrons. Okay, draw now a skeletal structure of our molecule. So... What that means is we're just going to use single bonds to piece it together in a simple way. Now, we need to remember that the leftmost atom is typically central. So that would be hydrogen. That's the one that's farthest to the left on the periodic table. right? The three elements we have are carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. But here's the thing. Our, carbon, our hydrogens always have to be terminal. They always come on the end. So it can't be hydrogen. And so that means carbon has to be central. You'll see carbon is very often central. Okay, so we add a carbon. And now we start to add on our other elements. We have four of them, so I'm just going to draw a line to the four other elements with a single bond. So we got an H, we got an H, we got an H, and we got a Cl. Here's the deal. Doesn't matter what order I draw those in. So that will be the same molecule regardless of where I put that chlorine. So it doesn't matter where you put the chlorine. You can put it in any one of the spots. Okay, now we're on to step three. Distribute the remaining electrons. Okay, so we need to think about how many we've already distributed. How many is that? Well, we have four bonds, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've distributed eight total electrons, and we have 14 to distribute. So that means we have six more. Okay? So six more electrons we need to distribute. Now, hopefully, 
you might remember that hydrogen wants two electrons. So hydrogen is not a place we're ever going to add lone pairs. But the other elements, we can add lone pairs. And we're going to start on the outside and work our way inside. So you always add lone pairs to the outside elements first. So again, we have eight electrons from our bonds. We need to get to 14. So let's add lone pairs. Eight electrons from bonding. Nine, 10. 11, 12. 13, 14. Now I'm out of electrons. Once you're out of electrons, you need to go into check your structure mode to make sure things are good. There's a chance in some cases you have to add double bonds here. So what do you do when you run out of electrons? You First, you check for octets. Okay, let's check carbon. Carbon has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So carbon has its octet. It's happy. Remember, when we count octet, we count the electrons from the bonds as going completely with whatever atom we're considering. Those are shares, so they count towards both. So now let's check chlorine. We already checked carbon. It's good. Chlorine has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So chlorine has an octet, so it's happy. All right? Now we need to make sure hydrogen is happy. Hydrogen doesn't want 8. It wants 2. And each of these hydrogen has one bond, which means it's a happy hydrogen. And that's just a good rule to remember. You always want your hydrogens to have one bond. All right, so that is what that molecule looks like. That means if you have CH3Cl and you go look at it in the world, that you'll find carbon in the center, chlorine on the outside, and that chlorine will have some lone pairs and nothing else will. So how many lone pairs does this molecule have? One, two, three. Does it have any double bonds or triple bonds? The answer is no. So you know all those facts about this molecule by following these simple rules. So, the rules might seem complicated, but it's actually amazing that you can predict what nature looks like just by knowing these simple rules. Okay, let's do two more molecules. We'll move a little faster. All right, CO2, carbon dioxide. First, count the valence electrons. So, we'll count carbon. Carbon's right here, and just like always, it has one, two, three, four. And there's just one carbon. So, that's four electrons from carbon. Oxygen comes two more blocks over, so it has six. And there's two of them. So that gives us 12 electrons. We know there's two because there's the two there. Now we add up. That's 16 valence electrons. Again, it's an even number, so we're happy. So we've done step one. Now let's do step two. We're going to draw a skeletal structure with the leftmost atom being central. The leftmost atom is carbon, so we'll make it central. Again, carbon will often be your central atom. And now we're just going to tack on the oxygens. Let's make those single bonds a little neater. All right, so the oxygens have single bonds. And we're through step two. Let's distribute the rest of our electrons. So what you'll see here is we have a lot of electrons, 16. And we've only distributed four in those bonds. So each of those bonds contributes two. So we only have right now two, four electrons shown. So let's do the rest. We're going to start distributing the lone pairs. Remember, we always do that on the outmost atoms first. So I have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so I've distributed all of my electrons. So I'm through step 3. Now step 4, check for my octets. All right, let's check oxygen. Oxygen has 1, 2, 3... Four, five. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me count that again. One, two, three, four for my bond. Five, six, seven, eight. So it's got an octet. It's totally happy. That's good news. So the oxygen's happy. And you might see, hey, the oxygen on the right actually looks exactly the same. So it must be happy. Let's check carbon. Carbon has one, two, three, four electrons around it. So carbon ain't happy. What do we do? Okay, well, if we don't have the octet, and we've used all of our electrons. Now we add extra bonds. So we can add double bonds or triple bonds as needed. Remember, if some of our atoms have an octet and others don't, and we're out of electrons, the only way to help is to share more, and that's what bonds do. Here's a mistake a lot of students make. They'll say, oh, okay, I'll add some bonds. What's wrong with that? Two things. One is you just increase the total number of our electrons there. Can't do that. The second thing is you've blown apart oxygen's octet. That oxygen now has 10 electrons around it. It's not happy. So instead of just adding a bond, never do that. Never just write a bond. We're always going to move electrons. We're going to say, you know what? This lone pair is going to become 
a bond. So let's use that lone pair and let's share it because that way carbon might be able to get its octet. Okay, well let's share it then. So we'll erase it there and we'll add a bond there. Does carbon have its octet now? Stop every time and ask, do I need to add more bevel bonds or am I done? Carbon now has one, two, three, four, five, six. Still not happy. So what that means is we need to share more electrons. So we'll come over to this other oxygen and we'll do the same thing. We'll take two of these away and we'll share them. Now carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's totally happy. We got a happy carbon now. Everything's got its octet. We have the correct number of valence electrons. We have ourselves the correct structure for carbon dioxide. Okay, last molecule, HF. So I wanted to do one where there's only two atoms, which looks a little different and can throw people off. First, let's count valence electrons. Hydrogen has one, because it's on the leftmost, and there's only one hydrogen, so that's one valence electron. Fluorine comes way over here, so it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven electrons times one gives you seven electrons. We add them together, we get eight. Notice that's an even number, that's good. So we're through step one. All right, draw the skeleton structure. Now, when there's only two atoms, neither of them is central. So we don't even really need to think about that second part there. We're just gonna draw them and link them together. There you go. Now distribute the valence electrons as lone pairs. So we have two electrons shown there as a bond. And then we should ask, which place do we wanna put the lone pairs? Well, remember hydrogen only wants two. So as soon as it has a bond, it's happy. So that's why it would be wrong to start adding these here. You don't want to do that because hydrogen only wants two electrons. So that means we'll add them to the fluorine. So I have two from the bond, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, cool. Now I've distributed my remaining valence electrons. And now let's check for octets. So fluorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight because my bond contributes two electrons. So I have eight electrons there. So my fluorine's happy. Hydrogen only wants two and it has a bond, so it's also happy. So that's the correct molecule for HF. Okay, so this has been relatively simple Lewis structures. What we're gonna move on to next in part three is drawing Lewis structures where there are exceptions to the octet rule, and that can get a little more involved. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry.